So, so one of the questions people ask in these systems is like, how can we decentralize something? Mm -hmm. How can we take something that right now one person is responsible for and delegate that responsibility to more people, to a group of people, um, and hold mm -hmm. them accountable? So when you do that, there becomes a question of like, how does this group of people make decisions mm -hmm. uh, that need to be made in the system? So for example, software upgrades. How do you decide when a decentralized exchange gets updated and how do you decide what new code to run if there's not one particular person responsible for it? Mm -hmm. um, so classically, in a lot of systems like shareholder corporations and governments and uh, even local sort of uh, organizations, the solution people use is voting. It's sort of the natural solution is just to have everyone say what they prefer and somehow tally the total and make whatever decision is the most popular among those. Um, so an example in a decentralized system would be sort of a software update. Uh, mm -hmm. If we want to update our DEX, how do we decide? Well, maybe our DEX will issue a token to all of its uh, stakeholders, all the people involved in running the DEX. Um, and then this token will allow people to vote on software upgrades. And whichever upgrade receives the most votes is the one the system sort of automatically does. Um, mm. So there are a lot of attacks once you sort of digitize voting and bring voting into this new environment. It's a very different world than people going to a ballot box or like mailing in pieces of paper mm. um, because the, there's a lot more threats out there sort of on the internet and people can communicate secretly and sort of have all sorts of uh, arrangements that, that might be problematic. Um, so the dark DAO, which is sort of the work you're talking about, is talking about voting, um, e-voting, and in this case specifically e-voting in cryptocurrencies, and how that's vulnerable to essentially uh, vote buying and bribery. Um, mm. So I can, I can bribe you to buy a particular uh, vote, uh, have you vote a certain way, and I can do that in a way that um, I'm guaranteed that you'll actually vote that certain way. Mm. You're guaranteed that if you do that, you'll get paid. So it's fair for both of us, fair exchange of vote for money. Mm. Um, and also no one else out in the network besides us can sort of tell that you're being bribed or know uh, that you're being bribed uh, or detect that. Um, and that's a problem because in voting, like oftentimes you have a pretty large majority of people that just like don't care about a particular vote. Mm. So you can probably buy their vote pretty cheaply. Um, in the real world, it's less of a problem a little bit, especially in elections, because vote buying is illegal uh, for one. Mm -hmm. And for two, uh, you don't actually know which way someone voted. So then, do you feel that um, that the idea, the main difference? So maybe the question is, what is the main difference between voting in a decentralized way on, let's say, a blockchain versus voting in the traditional system? Yeah, that's a, a great question. So I think there's uh, quite a lot of differences. Um, one of them is, is in what we call the setup. So like who gets to have a right to vote? Um, in many blockchain-based systems, anyone can sort of come in and vote at any time, uh, especially if they're really permissionless systems where anyone can come participate and no one can stop them. Mm. Um, whereas in a, in a regular election, you have sort of an authority that has a list of everyone who's allowed to vote. Mm -hmm. And that authority is responsible for like making sure the right people are allowed to vote and that their votes are counted sort of appropriately. Right. Um, and they also know everyone who's going to be participating in the election. So you don't have that sort of uh, voting authority, which makes things more complicated in terms of who can, who can join and uh, exit. Um, another difference is if you're doing everything online um, and you let users sort of generate their own keys, you have no guarantees about their identity, really. You don't know if that key was generated by them, if it was generated by them, like doing some joint computation with someone else, if it's trapped inside like a trusted hardware environment where no one has access to it. Mm. Um, so just the fact that users can come in and generate their own keys at any time uh, sort of gives a lot more possibilities for misbehavior. Mm -hmm. um, so some people think that basically as soon as you make it electronic, you're screwed. Because even if you manage to make the perfect protocol that's cryptographically not bribable or vulnerable to coercion or other things like that, there's still people voting on their own devices, which can get compromised by viruses and mm. things like that. 
So the, the, the like landscape of threats is just so large that it's hard to plan for all the attacks people are going to do. Mm -hmm. And also voting is so sensitive and so important to like the functioning of society that the incentive to attack it is very high. Like People will spend a lot of money trying to screw it up. Um, so from that perspective, there are definitely a lot of experts who just, like Ron Rivest said, like, mm -hmm. just don't do it electronically. We don't know how to do it. You know, we don't even understand how little we understand, essentially. Right. Um, there are other people who say, yes, there are a lot of problems that we know about. Um, and some of them have solutions. Some of them just have trade-offs. Um, but even with these problems, it's still worth it to go to electronic voting mm. because it gives you some features that regular voting doesn't have. Um, so, for example, you can do the counting of the votes in a trustworthy way. Um, and you can know that as long as um, sort of the set of people that was allowed to vote was correct, that votes were all counted correctly, mm. um, which for some elections could be a huge deal. Like there's a lot of fraud, um, especially in authoritarian.